So I want to ask you a question about this. So what do we know about the relationship between, call it naturally acquired vitamin D through sunlight versus supplementation of vitamin D uh, exogenously through you know a supplement? Do we do we have any reason to believe that those are different at the same level of vitamin D? In the same, like, like in terms of like how vitamin D is acting. So the thing is, is that when you're in sunlight, like there's other things going on, right? That's, that's my point. Like and if so, you're outside getting sunlight, you're more active. And you're nitric oxide. Like there's like other things that you're getting from the sunlight. So yeah. there's a confounder there. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, like with respect to, let's say, forget every, like, let's say you finally, you, you, you convert the vitamin D3 into the 25 hydroxy vitamin D into the 125, you know. At that level, it's it is the same, like you know, to some degree. I mean, that's not when it's when it's binding to the vitamin D receptor, like the 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 actual one twenty five hydroxy vitamin D, which is the active steroid hormone. It, it's the same. Yeah. Um, now, with respect to like you know, your body regulates how much vitamin D three is converted or is released in the bloodstream and converted into twenty five hydroxy vitamin D at the level of sun exposure. So at a certain level you're not making the vitamin D3 when you've gotten so much of it. That's how you avoid toxicity, right? Like you're not you're not going to keep Yeah, what's the highest level of vitamin D a person can ever get to naturally? Meaning if if you just like took a an individual and put them in the sun, put you know, shorts only, no shirt, go out there and work in the sun for all summer. Like how high like how high were my vitamin D levels when I was in high school working construction? I know I I I know there's like data out there where there, where people have looked at like you know, um, you know, people that are that are like out in the they're out they're outside all the time, but they're all, they're honestly l often looking at uh, people like in the tropics and stuff that have uh, more melanin. melanin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which again, so it might depend yeah, you know, yeah. also on on that. But like, that would be an interesting, at least, way to say like the if the body has a built in mechanism to say I'm not going to let you make more vitamin D than this. It does supplementing above that would be a bad idea? And I'm it is, guessing. yeah. Like, and so that's why looking at measuring what, what your do you vitamin think D that threshold is. Um, I I think going above sixty nanograms per milliliter is probably still okay. Like going to eighty, you know, like there's there's studies looking at 80 and it's still associated with lower all-cause mortality. Um, and in fact, I mean, honestly, if you start to look at some of the literature, you have to take a really high dose daily for like a decade to start getting like the the high calcium. But like the problem is that when you absorb, uh, when, you're vit when you have a lot of vitamin D, you absorb more dietary calcium and you also absorb more phosphorus and calcium plus phosphorus can precipitate, right? And so like, there's so many factors involved, mm. but I think most people are not supplementing. Like there's some people that are crazily supplementing and yep. it's like they just think more of everything is good, but I don't think most people are doing that. Like I don't think taking 5,000, 7,000 IUs for most people, some people have to take more than that because they yep. have SNPs, right? And you've probably seen it in your patients where it's like they got to take a high level just to get up to 30 or 40. Um, this, by the way, is why I think all these vitamin D trials, the mega trials are so flawed is – they're always doing it on the basis of a they're they're taking too low a dose and they're doing it based on dose not level right. like to me the dispositive study on this would be take a whole bunch of people whose vitamin d is 30 give half of them a placebo give half of them whatever vitamin d is necessary to get them to 60 or 80 80 yeah get something higher yeah get create separation <laughs> don't go 30 to 40 but be like do it the way we do blood pressure trials when we do a blood pressure trial we don't say you're going to take a fixed dose of a med we give you whatever dose of the med is necessary to change the blood pressure. So we're comparing two blood pressure levels, not placebo versus 10 milligrams of a drug that for one guy is too much and for one guy is too little. And yet this isn't done in vitamin D. And I find it infuriating that we have no really good, reliable RCT data on what seems like a jugular question. Are you better off with a vitamin D level of 80 than you are of 30. I mean, again, we think the answer is yes, but the, you know, evidence-based medicine, you know, crowd will tell you no, because this trial that gave people 2000 IU for 10 minutes found no difference. Right. Or they, like, they measured maybe if they, if they measured anyone's level, they measured like 10% of the population. Yes, exactly. Like <laughs> the most recent study. We right. only got a level on 10% of people. With with like, you know, the, the fact of the matter is so many people do have these SNPs too. Yep. And I remember having an email dialogue with Joanne Manson. This was years ago when I was postdoc. 
And I was, and she was, I think at the time she was doing the vital study. It hadn't been published yet. And it was like, please, please, can you get the SNP data in there? Can you get, measure the levels? Like do everything, you know, like it's, it's so important. Um, but I'm with you on that. I think I think what is clear is avoiding deficiency, and I do say that a lot. Because and where are you drawing the line? Is th is thirty or forty? Where are you? Where I are you say going? thirty. I mean, okay. it it does depend on are you looking are you looking at what the endocrine society says uh, is more of an adequate level or yep. inadequate? Yep. Or are you looking at deficiency where you're like literally like, you know, like your bones or like your bone health isn't you know good? Yeah. So, um, but. For me, I, it, I I want to know the same thing. Like I'm always kind of like hovering around 50, 60, but I'm like, should I be at 80? Yeah. You know, and I don't know. Um, so it's always like, okay, well, I'll err on the side of caution. You know, err on the side of caution. Certainly avoiding deficiency. Yeah. Um, but even with respect to like all these genes I'm talking about, you know, like what if there's some crosstalk with that? There is crosstalk, but what if there's some way that um, having a level of vitamin D, you know, 50, 50 or 60 nanograms per milliliter does help alleviate some of the effects of having no estrogen. You know, like we don't really know. That's interesting. We're it is, especially when you look at the mechanism. And I, like I said, I spent a lot of time looking at these response elements and, and, I, and you know, looking at the fact that estrogen can actually compensate for um, vitamin D deficiency mm. in some cases with certain genes too. Mm. And it goes both ways. So I'm like, well, I feel like that should be an important uh, component in the equation, right? Um, but I'm with you on the tent, like, like this, even the studies I was talking about where there was protective effects against, you know, in the cardiovascular health, in uh, cancer prevention with uh, hormone replacement therapy, when initiated, like, you know, within a, a close range, like not greater than six years. So it was six years or less. So if, you go, if you're doing it seven years, that's not part of the study. Um, it, they only did it for like 10 or 11 years and they stopped. Yep. And it's like, well, what happens then when you're 65 and you, if you started at 55, you know, like, yeah. so we don't, we don't know the question to that. I mean, the answer to that either. Um, but I'm happy that you're thinking about it.